In July 2003, the City of Santa Barbara began the Neighborhood Improvement Program. This new program was initiated due to public input City Council members received while campaigning for office and a new City Administrator who recognized the disparity of service levels in different neighborhoods. In less than four years, the creation of this program has resulted in millions of dollars spent in city neighborhoods, dozens of major cleanup projects, and removed nearly 1,000 tons of debris from city streets and residential areas. So what is neighborhood improvement? It is the repair and installation of streets, sidewalks, curbs and gutters, and street and traffic lights. It means creating safer and more appealing neighborhoods through improved maintenance, tree trimming, street sweeping, and retrieval of shopping carts. It means the removal of graffiti. It means the elimination of illegal trespassing and the accompanying fire hazards that could spark a devastating wildland fire. Simply put, it means making every neighborhood in our city better. As part of its strategy, the program focuses on neighborhoods with deficient infrastructure and services, reorganizes the delivery of services by city departments, encourages volunteer efforts by residents and community groups, increases zoning enforcement, and engages the support of the city attorney's office. Initially, administration of the program was centralized in the city administrator's office. An interdepartmental team of staff was assembled to form the Neighborhood Improvement Task Force. The task force is responsible for planning, organizing, implementing, and monitoring all projects. With so much work to do, the question was where to start. In the fall of 2003, council members and key staff toured the city to pinpoint areas in need. They visited illegal encampments and substandard housing near Aliso Street. They saw first-hand conditions at TV Hill, a private property plagued with decades of trespassing violations, illegal encampments, and environmental hazards that included a serious risk of wildfire. They witnessed the deteriorating living conditions at Deluxe Trailer Park on Punta Gorda Street, with missing sidewalks, curbs, and gutters. And throughout the tour, they saw graffiti, shopping carts, dumping, and missing sidewalk links. Although the program focuses on all of the city's needs, after the tour, it was apparent that there were certain areas that had been neglected. They broke up these areas into four regions, Lower East Side, Lower West Side, West Side, and West Downtown. On the Lower East Side, Elisa Street had been the site of an RV fire caused by substandard living conditions and also suffered from illegal camping, drug use, and excessive garbage. A 30-member crew from Public Works, Parks and Recreation, the Police Department, Caltrans, and CHP teamed up and removed 84 tons of debris. It's the first time that UPE signed with an agreement with the City of Santa Barbara. It's a joint venture, and we'll come out and attack a problem. We'll clear our right of way of all the vegetation and all the debris and beautify the, the right of way. So it's a win-win situation for the city and also especially for the railroad, too. Another location that had many state and city code violations was Deluxe Trailer Park. In late 2003, the city provided a $50,000 grant to legal aid to work with park residents, park owners, and the state in order to ensure that the residents were given proper representation to receive fair relocation packages. For several months, numerous attempts were made to achieve voluntary compliance from the park owners, and after many broken promises and delays, the city attorney's office filed legal action in the fall of 2006. Uninhabitable vacant trailers have been removed from the park, and most of the park's residents have been relocated. The owners are now exploring options for the use of the property. In April 2004, the area from Dwight Murphy Park to the Bird Refuge was cleaned up. Six major illegal encampments were removed. Trees were removed and all vegetation in this area was pruned in such a manner to discourage new encampments. Over three tons of garbage and six tons of vegetation waste were collected during this cleanup. 
In February 2004, when the city approved plans to expand Casa Esperanza from 30 year-round beds to 100, it also began a comprehensive plan to address a number of problems in the neighborhood. Through Casa Esperanza's Step Up, a job development and community outreach program, shelter residents have clean surrounding areas, engaged in business outreach and pre-vocational training. One community organization that played a role in highlighting community needs in the East Side area was the Milpas Association. Not only did they work with the city during the planning stages of Casa Esperanza, the association also encouraged upgrades to infrastructure that better served the residents. So we conducted a number, with the city, conducted a number of workshops with people in the area and asked them for their input on what they thought was important. Uh, there were a number of features that were on the list that were going to happen that aren't here. And that's a direct result of being actively involved with the city and the city being responsive. On the Lower East Side, nearly $40,000 was spent to make sidewalks and curbs ADA compliant. Street lights were installed where none previously existed. Infrastructure was also improved to reduce flooding problems on Punta Gorda Street. The Creeks Division continued the restoration of Sycamore Creek near Cacique Street in the summer of 2006 with a number of community work days and cleanup events. Creeks also worked with Looking Good Santa Barbara to include this area in the East Side Neighborhood Cleanup Day in August. At the Franklin Center and East Side Library, $42,000 was spent to upgrade security lights and install bilingual ADA directional signage and renovate irrigation systems. This project resulted in increased security in the parking lots and improved accessibility. Also on the East Side, Ortega Park improvements are complete. New light fixtures have been installed, a high wall and shade structure were removed, and two exterior restroom screen walls were reconstructed. The project has resulted in increased security and improved lighting. I think that people are finally looking at some of these projects as, as part of their regular well-being, and I think it gives them a good feeling of, you know, being around a cleaner place or lighted security place and and I, you know, I think everyone, every every resident wants the same feeling of, of feeling safe and being clean. A current project is the Montecito street lighting improvements. This project improves pedestrian level street lighting from Milpa Street to Soledad Street. With the design complete and the lights purchased, the project is expected to be finished by June 30th of this year. On the Lower East Side, Punta Gorda Street between Voluntario and Sycamore Creek had no curb, gutter, or sidewalk. Neighborhood residents had to park off street on a dirt parkway. Due to the lack of a sidewalk, pedestrians were forced to weave in and out of parked vehicles to reach their homes. This low-lying area had experienced periodic flooding due to drainage issues. Muddy conditions from the underdeveloped south side of the road generated a hazard for cars and pedestrians, a condition that was alleviated with the installation of curb and gutter. In addition, to improve safety, pedestrian street lighting was added. The project is expected to be completed by June 30th of this year. One area that is in desperate need of preventative reconstruction is the Sycamore Creek Bridge at the 101 Freeway. During the winter storms of 1995, nearby neighborhood homes were inundated with water and mud. The proposed Highway 101 improvements include widening this bridge by more than 50 feet. This addition, along with future channel improvements upstream and downstream, will help reduce flooding in the Lower East Side. The Neighborhood Improvement Program has also made many improvements throughout the Lower West Side. For decades, illegal encampments on TV Hill had been a nagging problem and a high fire risk creating a cat and mouse enforcement problem. With the fire marshal in the lead, staff teamed up to require the owner to clean and secure the property. While the city's efforts were in full motion, the property changed hands. The city moved in with an aggressive enforcement program to rid the area of illegal encampments. The new owners, Chad and Jenny Dreyer, funded a cleanup of the area. Stoves, flammable and toxic materials, makeshift campsites, furniture, power generators, and drug paraphernalia were removed. All in all, about 92 tons of debris. 
With the new property owner's commitment, TV Hill is now safe and the high fire risk has been minimized. On Cornell Street, Parks crews removed several hundred foot tall eucalyptus trees that were deemed unsafe and the pathway leading up to McKinley Elementary School was cleaned up. Currently underway is the Lower West Side Cornell Street pedestrian linkage. This project is creating ADA compliant sidewalks, curbs and gutters, improving drainage and lighting, constructing a retaining wall and a pedestrian and bike path on the hillside up to McKinley School. The street improvements and fencing have been completed. Landscaping will be installed in conjunction with the bike path project. Also, a parking lot will be repaved and lighting improved that links Coronel and Ladera Streets. This project has provided safe access to McKinley School and Santa Barbara City College for neighbors and especially for school children. I think it's a fantastic use of city funds because of all the people that have been able to benefit from it. You know, it, you know it's not a small task if you got two kids in a stroller and little kids and this will make it so much easier for them to be able to feel that they're safe here, they're not going to run into things that they shouldn't. From the Lower West Side over to the West Side, the task force continued working. At 815 and 817 West Ariaga Street, neighbors were concerned about trash, junk, rodents, trespassers, and general dilapidation of the properties. With the attorney's office legal efforts, the city red tagged both houses after making the determination that the structures were so unsafe that no person should be allowed inside. They also cleaned up the properties and have since boarded up the windows and secured the property from illegal trespassers living there. The task force will not quit. The city attorney's office has now filed suit against the new property owner. For some time, Oak Park area residents had reported frequent incidents of drunkenness, increased crime, trespassing, and illegal encampments. Their concern initiated numerous public meetings with the Oak Park neighborhood as well as Oak Park event organizers. In January 2007, City Council designated Oak Park as a no-alcohol park except by permit. Another local park is gaining much-needed space. The upper portion of the Bonnet Park expansion is underway. The project includes construction of an artistically interpreted floor plan of a house to provide seating, a tile art project produced by neighborhood children, lawn and landscape beds of native plants, paths and benches, interpretive signs relating to urban creeks, and small-scale sculptures for young children. San Andres Street is the main north-south artery running through the west side. With the exception of this project, every lot on this one mile long street is developed with apartments, single family homes, and businesses. Bonet Park is the sole park serving this area. The west side has a need for more parks and open space. It is a densely populated portion of the community. With only three acres of parkland serving over a mile radius of residents, the area is well below national, state, and local standards for park space which recommend five to ten acres within a quarter mile radius. The Creeks and Parks Division sponsored a neighborhood cleanup event at Bonet Park in August 2006. Residents near the park had complained of increasing litter, graffiti, and unsanitary conditions, as well as the use of the park for drinking. The cleanup was held as part of a series of citywide creek and beach cleanup events. In the west downtown, an abandoned house at 421 de la Vina was being used by trespassers, creating a public health nuisance and safety hazard for neighbors. After the city filed a civil complaint and imposed civil penalties, the property owner abated all outstanding violations. In October 2003, Looking Good Santa Barbara and City Public Works Street Division staff worked with Calvary Chapel to paint the Anna Pamu pedestrian bridge and clean up the surrounding neighborhood. The bridge, a major thoroughfare providing access from downtown to the west side, had long been plagued with graffiti and unsanitary conditions. More recently, during the summer of 2006, Stork Placida was singled out as a problem area by the Neighborhood Improvement Task Force. The Placida became a source of increased complaints from adjacent businesses and passersby who were faced with confrontational and rude behavior. The problems were exacerbated by loitering, aggressive panhandling, and drug abusers. 
In order to discourage this behavior, the wall at the Placida entrance was modified to make sitting more difficult, resulting in a design that makes it uncomfortable to use the wall as a bench. The Neighborhood Improvement Program isn't only focusing on the specific areas mentioned. When problems are found anywhere in the city, they have taken action. The house at 2510 Mesa School Lane is one example. In a serious state of disrepair, with overgrown vegetation and abandoned vehicles, it had become a burden for nearby residents. The house was red tagged and no one is currently living there. The city attorney's office filed a complaint in March of 2006 and was successful in obtaining a motion for summary judgment. The next steps include seeking court authority to abate the exterior of the property. With the new, specially designed graffiti removal truck and Georgia Lopez in the lead, the city's graffiti removal program has been in operation for almost two years. Over the last year, the graffiti hotline has received 3,000 calls. Graffiti is removed early in the morning before most people head to work, which makes the program very effective. Congratulations to Georgia for receiving a 2007 Spirit of Service Award from Looking Good Santa Barbara. You really have to have a heart for it, and I have. You know, I, I, I was born and raised here. I'm 47 years old. I, this is when my parents brought their children and raised them and stuff, and I take pride in my city. The shopping cart retrieval program began in 2005 with the intent of getting shopping carts off the streets. Although the program got off to a slow start with poor participation, over time and with outreach to local businesses, the program has gone from the city paying for 158 carts removed in one month to an average of only a few. Police officers are also taking a proactive approach to shopping cart retrieval. Instead of spending valuable time transporting shopping carts taken by transients, the officers now issue citations to the offenders and lock up the carts on site for later retrieval by the cart collector. This creative approach has increased time available to do police work. In November 2004, Parks, Public Works, the Police Department, and Caltrans teamed up to clean four illegal encampments from the Bird Refuge to Los Patos Way along the Union Pacific right-of-way. Forestry also pruned a eucalyptus grove which sheltered a large illegal encampment. Over four tons of garbage were removed. In July 2006, the team worked together to clean up three more major illegal encampments at Anapamu and Walnut Streets. In the railroad corridor, over $64,000 was spent for fencing and landscaping along nine lower west side and west side streets to create a barrier between the neighborhoods and railroad tracks. This project resulted in safer neighborhoods and decreased blight by cleaning up trash, landscaping, and discouraging dumping. $56,000 was also spent for major improvements to the Yananali, Rancheria, and Pilgrim Terrace community gardens. Improvements included permanent boarded garden plots, wide pathways, kiosks, sheds, benches, and raised plots for ADA access. I think it's vital to have community gardens in a community uh, at a very elemental level. There's people who are on low income that can not maybe afford to buy really healthy food, but they can afford to garden. It's a beautiful place where people can come and learn and share. Uh, there's children, there's lots of families that garden here. We have elders from Pilgrim Terrace community here. And, you know, it runs the gamut with the different people that have wonderful experiences here. One area of public works that is helping to keep Santa Barbara clean is the street sweeping program. Picking up over 3 million pounds of debris each year from the city streets, they not only keep the areas looking good, but also prevent that trash from eventually flowing into our creeks. The goal for the program is to sweep 85% of all residential neighborhoods, which translates to over 250 curb miles every week. And our objective of the program is to improve uh, neighborhood cleanliness, to enhance the environment, to improve bike lane safety, because much of the sediment and gravel and debris accumulates in the bikeways and sediment and rocks and gravel slowly deteriorate our roads. So the residents, they appreciate our efforts, they appreciate the special sweeps 
and they appreciate the ongoing service. How are you doing, Charlie? Could I talk to you a second? In contrast to a traditional punishment-based process to law enforcement, restorative policing focuses on persuading people to make a change in their lives. This approach is a collaboration of organizations which interconnect to form a broader network of resources for the mentally ill in our community. Police officers are an integral part of the restorative policing efforts, as they are often the first to respond to calls for service involving the mentally ill. The ultimate goal is to maintain public safety while eventually restoring the individual to being a productive member of the community. The city is making headway and seeing improvements in our neighborhoods, but there are still many challenges. Although we're battling and reducing graffiti, the problem is not going away anytime soon. Homelessness continues to pose many challenges to our community. However, the recent approval of the 10-year plan to end chronic homelessness offers a comprehensive strategy to improve the situation and a commitment to follow through on it. The high cost of housing remains a major barrier to overcoming the problem. Needs are greater than resources. We need to continue to look for ways to work better and smarter. All missing sidewalk, curbs, and gutters cannot be filled with existing resources. We have 122 miles of missing sidewalks throughout the city. Even with this need, the annual budget may be more than cut in half in 2008. Jurisdictional issues between the city, county, Caltrans, Union Pacific, schools, the state, and others are often difficult to work through. Even with these challenges, there are also many proactive strategies in place. Continuing tours of the affected neighborhoods keeps us aware of our successes and keeps us in touch with new issues. Looking Good Santa Barbara operates the Adopt-A-Block program, which provides free supplies and support to those that commit to keeping their block or neighborhood graffiti and litter free. In order to be more proactive and better utilize this resource, the Neighborhood Improvement Task Force is working to expand on Adopt-A-Block. The goal is to create a system of proactive change where the residents work with city staff to identify neighborhood needs and goals. Not only would residents assist city staff with prioritizing and giving input on projects, they would identify neighborhood improvement tasks that they, as a group, would be responsible for. These tasks would range from graffiti or litter cleanups to having one person call in abandoned shopping carts. This hands-on approach will help develop a sense of neighborhood ownership. The hope is that by working one-on-one -on -one with residents, together we can create more cohesive, clean, and safe neighborhoods. Even with all the progress so far, there is more to do. The task force has identified the targeted priority projects in three different categories. Public right-of-way, zoning and code enforcement, and parks and creeks. Without partnerships, the neighborhood improvement program's impact throughout the city would not have been nearly as strong the task force has made major progress along the railroad corridor with the help of Union Pacific. Also, through partnership with Caltrans, we have increased the efficiency and effectiveness of cleanup efforts. And although the Neighborhood Improvement Program is a City of Santa Barbara project, the help received from the County of Santa Barbara will be crucial, particularly if we are going to tackle graffiti in the flood control channels. In less than four years, the accomplishments of the Neighborhood Improvement Program have been numerous. From TV Hill becoming clean and secure, to Punta Gorda becoming more accessible, progress has been made. Overall, the city looks better and is safer. Cooperation and teamwork is fostering relationships and increasing a sense of community pride. The Neighborhood Improvement Program will continue to work to instill a sense of ownership in these areas so residents are inspired to keep them safe and clean. The program will not stop until all areas of the city realize their potential and the true meaning of the word neighborhood.